Okay, good morning everybody. Uh, this is a little different here because uh, my mic was not working because Bandicam was reset by Windows 10, so unfortunately I couldn't uh, um, record with the video, so I'm uh, doing an over, uh, over broadcast, I should say. So here I am in the 182 uh, Cessna here. I'm going to be doing uh, some practice touch and goes. Uh, I actually um, had already pre-flighted the aircraft, so now what I'm doing here is I'm pushing back the aircraft, getting into position to get it started, and once we are in the pushback position, uh, I'll get the airplane cranked up, and then I'll show you what, or tell you what I'm doing as, as I'm watching the video. As I said, I'm recording a uh, overcast over this thing, but this is the A2A 182 Cessna. Beautiful, beautiful aircraft. If you're serious about flying or want to learn how to fly, uh, this is the way to go. So here I am now in the cockpit. I'm getting ready to take off. What I want to do is I have all the radios set. I have the radio set to 111.70, which is the ILS for runway 3. And I have the DME set for 335 for the NB that's located not too far from the airport. Now to make sure that you don't have any airport uh, intrusions or anything, You'll see me looking at the um, heading indicator, and I will turn the heading indicator to runway 210 because that is the runway that I'm going to be taking off from. So runway 20. If I was taking off from say runway 3, I'd be setting the heading indicator to runway uh, 030 degrees. The numbers on the runways uh, are in relevance to magnetic north. So runway 21 is 210 degrees relevant to magnetic north uh, su such as runway 6 would be relevant to 060 degrees of magnetic north so I'm putting on the pit heat just or turning off the pit heat um, from here just checking the make sure there's no uh, aircraft now I'm going to be taxiing there's the pit but I'm going to change the view because I always like the uh, the pit controls your uh, airspeed indicator your um, uh, it ba basically works on a vacuum so let me change the view here changing it to cockpit or propeller view which I like but the pit controls your airspeed indicator your vertical speed indicator and your uh, altimeter as you can see here, I'm just looking over. That's what I was explaining about the pit. That's your vertical speed indicator right there. And your heading indicator and your, uh, uh, what you call it, your horizon is actually gyroscopically, if I'm pronouncing that correctly, is gyroscopic, is controlled by gyroscopics. So now we're going to radio the tower that we're going to be heading to runway 21 for takeoff or taxiing to runway 21 so 21 we're going to we're going to remain in the pattern that means we're not going to be leaving the we're not going to be leaving their airspace we're going to be staying in the pattern and practicing touch and goes so If you look at the hood of the 182, you can see a line on the on it. That's technically like your right shoulder. So what you want to do is you want to line that up. You want to line that up, which I'm pointing now with the yellow line. That means your nose wheel will be exactly on that yellow line. So as you can see, I'm powering up a little bit here. I'm getting that white line that's that uh, basically the hood the line on the hood I'm getting that on the yellow line and you'll see that our nose gear will be on that yellow line as you can see here so if you just remember that if you want to remember how to keep your nose wheel on that nose line with the 182 here uh, just keep that line that's on the hood of the airplane uh, on the yellow line and you'll, your nose will be on there or right shoulder that's basically what the uh, if you're sitting in the left side it's your right shoulder if you're sitting in the left side it's your left shoulder 
So a little tap on the brakes, a little bit of power using nothing but rudder control which is your feet not not touching the yoke that thing that I'm trying to touch right there for some reason was not working was not opening or closing that's actually an air vent that if your windows start to fog up you can uh, open that up increase the airflow in there and that will keep your windows from uh, fogging up but uh, I have not had the windows fog up on the uh, A2A yet so that's why I'm trying to see. I'm like, hmm, how come this isn't working? I'm touching the air vent. I'm moving it. I'm sliding it, but it's not working. I think it was more visible on the 172. And I, I remember I did use it on the 172, and it worked fine. So maybe they just didn't put that in this aircraft. I don't know. So taxiing to runway 3. I got that line on the hood lined up with the yellow line, which means my nose wheel is on that yellow line. Now what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to take the airplane and point it. I'm taking off from runway 21, but I'm going to be pointing my nose away from runway 21 because I want to be able to see I want to be able to see uh, if there's any incoming aircraft to that runway. Now KMGJ is an uncontrolled airport so you can take off and land uh, wherever you choose but common sense is if everybody's using one runway to take off um, it's best to use the runway that everybody else is taking off and landing from. I remember when I was with my flight instructor uh, I was about I don't know maybe a mile away from the runway I was at 800 feet coming in for a landing on runway 21 and uh, some guy came across the other runway which a mile you have to have at least a mile of separation between you but basically it was it was technically called almost a near miss because the guy like I said I was coming in from runway 21 and he was practicing touch and goes on the other runway I'll never forget that. And then I had that one guy. All right. Remember, I turned the heading. I turned the heading to uh, runway 21. So you'll see when I point the nose of my aircraft down runway 21, my heading indicator will be pointing directly down runway 21. And that's how you know you're not. You're. That's how you know you're taking off from the correct runway and not doing any uh, runway intrusions, as they say. So, a little bit of flap, I start to line up, I use up the power, go to full power. Once I hit 65, 70 knots, I will be airborne. And here we go, there we go, airborne. Flaps up, a little bit of trim. I'm going to fly the runway heading until I cross over Route 84. And then you look, use landmarks. You want to always use landmarks when you're flying. If you're VFR, you want to use landmarks. Alright, I'm flying over 84 now. I'll start to make my turn shortly. getting a, some altitude I'll start my turn once I cross 84 I'll start my turn and I'll be looking for KSWF uh, runway 9 which is Stewart Airport Stewart International Airport I use them as a landmark and we go flying over 211 route 211 should see the Stewart Airport in a couple seconds. Runway 9.
Alright, I missed, uh, I didn't see it actually on the, on the video, but now I'm flying over Route 84. And you want to have the runway, you want to at least be a mile away from the runway. And the way you can judge that is the, if you have the airport, the runway halfway up your strut. Now here I called it, I was on, uh, I think it was downwind which no I made a correction I had to make a correction I was actually on the crosswind downwind is if you're on the opposite side you have downwind or upwind or you have downwind base crosswind and base base um, base base yeah something like that and I'm like thinking hmm yeah And technically, crosswind is if you're um, flying across the runway. But now there's a little town out there that I'm using that as a guide point. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to head out to that cross point. I'm looking in my looking at the airport when I get on a 45 degree angle. Now this run, if I remember correctly, I came in a little bit too. I was a little bit too high. But I start, you know, I start to get better uh, alt altitude adjustments on my uh, my other tries. So now I hit the 10 degree flap, brings me back, brings me down to 90 90 miles per hour. Which you want to keep that push on the nose because when you f add some uh, with the Cessna, when you add uh, flaps, it wants the nose wants to come up a, a little bit. So I'll start trimming the nose down, and then I'll start my turn for base in just a second. I'm using that town as a reference. Here I go, turning on base. And I'm also looking at that indicator too, because I can tell where runway 21 is by looking at my heading indicator. Coming on base, I give it more flaps, 20% flaps. And yeah, I was, I think I was pretty high on this one. Yeah, I was at, yeah, it looks like 2,700 feet. Yeah, so I'm really high. So then what I do, a little bit of power, nose down to the left. I, I do a couple little spirals down to get to, to decrease my altitude. Unfortunately, I don't have a dual monitor, which I would love to have the uh, the airport map up where I can actually see the approach heights, the altitudes. Because here I'm just kind of winging it. Once you have the once you have the altitude, um, the exact altitudes of where you should be, then landing is much easier. But like I said, I don't have a dual monitor. I don't have the map up in front of me so I'm just kinda winging winging the landings here so still a little high I, one more little twirl around yeah I'm at uh, 1900 feet now 17 1600 1500 and that's 1400 I start making my approach now keeping my eye on the indicator the heading indicator down below so I can get lined up with runway 21 keeping it about 90 miles per hour there we go much better make some corrections use the landmarks the mountains to the right aim for the mountains and then turn on final flaps 
flaps. Now I'm full flaps here, so I don't know what she was talking about. Get my airspeed up a little bit. Now on approach to a runway, you want to see two, two red and two white. That means you're on the glide slope. I'm still a little high here. As you can see, the runway lights are both white. That means I'm high. If you see two red, that means you're too low. But if you saw two red at this point, you'd be in the trees. So I'm keeping the airspeed up to about 80. Now the one thing I am working on is I seem to pull up too soon, which makes me flare, which then I end up going down the runway. So I'm trying to figure out that sweet spot of when to pull up, pull back the power, and then let the airplane just stop flying and land on the runway nice and smooth. Because you can see I do a couple of bouncing Bettys here, which is not good for the aircraft. So I've been, yeah, doing a little bouncy Betty. So you'll see two red, two white coming up pretty shortly, which means I have the glide slope. That's the glide slope right there. I'm aiming for the 2-1, and you'll see I'll pull up too much on this one. Oh, I didn't, oh, so there were, actually that was, that's not a bad landing. Actually, that was the best landing out of the bunch, I think. So full power, flaps up, Long landing. taking off Long again, landing. going around. Actually, that was not a bad landing. I didn't bounce it too much there. So we'll do the same thing, fly over 84. We're going to look for um, KWSF, which is uh, Stewart International Airport, runway 9. And we'll start making our turns. There we go over 84. Once we get over 84, we'll start making our turn. There's the Walkell River. All right, here we go. We start making our turn, keeping our speed up, adding a little bit of trim. And I'm trying to see if I can see Stuart. I'm actually, like I said, I'm recording. I'm recording my voice as I'm watching the video on my video maker. So let's see. Come on. Did I see Stuart? No, I didn't see Stuart. All right, making the turn over 84. Picking my landmarks. Turning into the airport a little bit because I was a little bit too far away. You want to be just about a mile away, halfway up the strut. The runway should only be about halfway up your strut. And that way you can tell you're a good distance away from the airport. Enough, you're not too close, you're not too far. So that's halfway up my strut, so that looks pretty good. So I'm going to hold that heading. One of my buddies trying to get in touch with me. He doesn't know I'm making a video right now, so... I'm just going to keep narrating over my uh, video here. Alright, so I'm picking my same landmark. I'm at 100 knots right now. Altitude is 1900 feet. I'll check back over my shoulder, see that 45 degree angle for the runway. And I'll be making my turn on base shortly.
little bit of flap push on the push on the stick to keep the nose down keep the airspeed up we're at 100 and we're pretty much at that 45 degree angle I can start making my turn on base now you always want to you'll see here that I'm not using the radio that much I'm just pretty much just focusing on landing and stuff like that but you always want to uh, you always want to make sure that you announce your position so if there's any other aircraft in the area everybody knows where they are 20 percent flap airspeed 80 knots and keep my eye on that heading indicator and my airspeed airspeed altitude and heading are your most important but it's more altitude and heading I mean uh, airspeed all right now I'm trying to remember was I a little high in this one this one actually doesn't look too bad so I'm going to slow down to 80. A little bit more flaps. Yeah, I was a little bit high. So I, did, I decided to make one little loop. Make one little loop. Keep my, my altitude. My airspeed is good, and my heading. I'm just waiting for the to for 21 to come around, which means I'll be lined up for runway 21. And we're looking pretty good here. Airspeed, altitude, everything's good. I'm down to about a thousand feet, and there's the runway. And I actually picked up the glide slope right from here, so that was actually a, a good approach. I think KMGJ, I think their approach is like 1,054, one if I remember correctly. So, full flaps, keep my airspeed up. But like I said, my issue is when I got my nose pointed at my target, Approaching two, I seem one. to pull up sometimes too soon and then I end up flaring which then the plane doesn't want to land it still wants to fly so I'm trying, I'm trying to get to the point where the plane will just want to land and the thing's going unstable here I don't understand it my airspeed's good my altitude's good I'm online I got full flaps and here we are approaching runway 21 again Keeping my nose pointed towards that 20. I'm aiming for that 21. And here I understand. I remember if I did, if I'm correct, I did a bouncing Betty, which I pulled up too soon. There's the glide slope, too red, too white. Perfect glide slope. Oopsie, too red, a little low. And then I pulled up too too much. I should let the. I should just let the aircraft like continue. A little bouncing Betty. All right, full power. Long Flaps landing. up. Long landing. Yeah, I should pull back the power. Let the plane want to land. Okay, so I'm going to fly the runway heading again, which is two three. I'm going to add some trim. Get the nose up a little bit. Same thing, cross over 84, look for KWS, KWSF, Stewart Airport, pick my landmarks and line up on the runway again. So crossing over 84 once again, climbing to 1,000 feet. Practice, practice, practice. Practice makes perfect. But as I said, if you're looking to really learn what it, what it's like to fly or learn the basics of flying, A2A simulation aircraft, you have to do everything you do in real life. You know, the stock 172 that comes with FXX is nice, but um, 
yeah, A2A2 is the way to go if you really want to really enhance your experience. I'm actually using the Orb X uh, scenery as well. So if this looks different from your FXX, that's because I'm using uh, Rex 4, I'm using Orb X, and uh, they did a good job. It, it makes it a lot nicer. All right, so 120 knots, keeping the airport at or the runway half up my rudder or rudder half up my strut, my wing strut. I got my landmark that I'm using to fly to to make my base approach for the runway. I am at now 1,800 feet. Correction, I am now at 1650 feet, 1650 feet. Most important thing to do before you start flying and before you take off is make sure you get the ATIS, which is the weather and the information of what the uh, altimeter would be. So altimeter right today would be 29 or 9 or 2, but it does change, the baryonic, the baryonic pressure does change. So I'm checking out my back window, looking at the 45 degree angle. There's my landmark, a little 10 degree, 10 degree flap. Get me down to about 90 knots. A little bit of power. If you can see that line, that's all. That's on the OBS to my right, which when I look back, I'll show you, I'll tell you about it. That's set to runway, uh, runway three, the ILS. So I'm flying away from, and it's showing me that I'm I'm uh, right of that I'm right of that uh, ILS. All right, here I come, turning on base. Keeping my eye up. You can also even when you're flying and you see runway two one that's directly left, you can actually tilt your wings, tilt your wings up to the right just briefly for a second so that you can get an eye on the uh, runway. And you'll see me do that in the next uh, the next um, landing. All right. So I'm full flaps, 80 knots on final. Announce my position. Cessna November 516 Delta Mike is 3 miles north, 1300 inbound, touch and go, right traffic, runway 21. And you'll see I'm announcing I'm on final. Cessna November 516 Delta Mike is on final, runway 21, touch and go, right traffic. Flaps. Now I'm full flaps here. My airspeed's good, my altitude is good. And I'm lining up on runway 21. Practice, practice, practice. But yeah, I'm gonna do a little more, more practice landings and get my, you know, bouncing Bettys. I wasn't really, Unstable. I wasn't Unstable. really a bouncing Betty when I was flying for real. I was uh, more of a creeper. You know, I'd land a little, bit, you know, a little bit long landings, so. I've been watching videos on YouTube and stuff of pilots and how they land. Now I got the glide slope. So I've been taking what they've been talking about and putting what they say, putting that to my flying and my sim, which would make hopefully make me a better pilot in the future when I start flying again. So I got a good glide slope here. This was like one of my best approaches right here because I had the glide slope the whole way. No ILS, just eyeballing it, no map, so I didn't know what the uh, what the al altitude changes were. And here, I pulled up too soon. So I got the glide slope, I'm aiming for that 21, 60 knots. And I keep on flaring the airplane, like here, I pull up too soon. Yep, see, and you see how I float? Because I pulled up too soon, so now I bleed off the speed. The aircraft still wants to fly. Long landing. It's long a it's a long landing, long landing, and I do a little long bouncing landing. Betty. 
full power flaps up do it again that long was landing. that was one of my best long broaches landing. but I keep on pulling up too soon Right, add a little trim to get the nose up. Once again, onto the breach. Actually, I keep my I should keep my nose up a little bit higher, usually with the horizon. So add a little bit more trim. There goes the Route 84 in the Walco River. I'll start to pull my nose up as I'm turning. That way I don't lose altitude. And I'm looking for... Can't really see it. I think that was Stuart right there. It's hard to see in this little window that I'm watching while uh, doing a uh, overlay of my voice because uh, my Windows 10 reset my bandy cam and it, had, it didn't have it set to the correct uh, microphone or headset or anything like that. So it didn't record my voice when I was doing the flying. So I'll do it this way. It's more than one way to skin a cat. Alrighty, so keep the runway halfway up the wing strut. That means you're not too close, you're not too far. Look for my landmark. That I'll fly to. There we go, I moved a little bit closer to the runway. That is Route 211 in Montgomery. Keep my eye on the. Uh, I'm a little low there, but I can still make corrections. My altitude is 1,300 feet. Which is fine, because I think it's 1,000. Five four feet for the approach for one way two one for KMGJ. All right, I'm looking at my landmark. I'm gonna power down a little bit. Add ten degree flap. There we go. Ten degree flap. Push the nose down to keep the nose from coming up. Use a little bit of the trim, and we're about ninety knots. Checking the 45 degree angle, which we pretty much have. We're going to be on base. Turning for base. 20 degree flaps. You'll see once I'm on my base, I'll tilt my right wing up, or my left wing up, so I can take a peek where the uh, runway is. You could do that. Just a little tilt. You know, look to the left, do a little tilt. Little tilt. There we go. I can see the runway. Get my nose level again. A little bit trimmed down. A little power because I was slowing down. Almost slowed down too much there. I was at 60 knots. 63 knots. Which is not good. Alright. Making my turn. And on final. Runway 21. Now this one I was looking to do a full stop landing, but they didn't give me the choice. So basically on this landing, I'll just come in 
and then I show you once I'm on the runway how to do a quick stop. Say if you're on a say if you do short landings, you want to stop quickly. Flaps. As soon as you flaps. hit the runway, yes, I have flaps. The girl keeps on saying fly my full flaps. Elevation, I mean altitude is good, airspeed is good. Um, if you're going to be landing on a short landing strip and you want to stay and you need to stop quickly, once your wheels are on the ground and you slow down to about I don't know, s say 60 knots, you f flaps up, hit your brakes, and then pull back on your yoke, and that'll do a quick stop landing. And you, you're going to see I'm going to do this one here, because I was going to go around again, but then I decided that, yeah, I'm done practicing for now, and I'm just going to uh, park Unstable. the airplane. Unstable. There I have the glide slope. You see two white, two red. It went white a little. It went white again. That means I'm a little bit high. There I go. I picked up the glide slope again. Two white, two red. And I'm coming in. Airspeed is good. Lining up with the runway. You'll see that line on my OBS. That little white line moving. I have that tuned into runway three ILS. So as long as that line is center that means I'm perfectly on the runway got hit by a little bit of wind 65 knots I slow down to about 63 glide so good looks good and I it was a perfect setup but I once again now I'm too low because it went too red too red that means I'm too low and I flared too much again I flared 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 let the airplane stop landing. All right, runways down. Still a little bouncing, not too bad. Now I'm going to go flaps up because I want to stop the plane short. Flaps up and pull on the yoke and pull all the way back on the yoke, and that will uh, stop me quickly. See how quick that I stop there? It does a number on your brakes, but you know if you don't do it so often, it's okay. All right. So now I start taxiing because I want to show off the beautiful job that the A2A people did. I mean, this aircraft is phenomenal. It is just so amazing. Cleared the runway. They just did a great job. And this is what I was telling my story was like last night. I was doing my practice landings and stuff like that. I had a Beach King uh, come in and he was holding short where I am right now while I was on the uh, uh, taxiway A he waited for me to get out of his way now this was AI I went all the way to my parking spot and once I got to my parking spot or once I started rounding and I was far enough away from him and then he started taxiing to his parking spot well of course it was dumb AI I parked in my parking spot, and what does he do? He comes up right behind me and crashes his plane right into me. And I'm like, dude, do you not see me? What the hell? So I'm just taxiing here like a drunken sailor. Using only feet. Now when you're on the ground, you're just using power. You're using throttle and feet. That's it. No yoke. Throttle and feet. So you want to touch the brakes a little bit to get a little power and turn the wheel. I'm kind of like pushing, I'm like racing to get to the parking spot. As you can see, I'm like a drunken sailor. I'm like all over the place. Dee -dee 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 -dee. I'm like, hello, trying to keep the nose on the nose line. Now I'm lining up that line with the yellow line. And you'll see, as I stop the aircraft, you'll see that my nose is on the yellow line. Those things are important, especially when you're uh, going for your, uh, when you're with the, your certified uh, instructor. You know, they really look at that things. How are you going to operate the aircraft? Are you going to act it sloppily or are you going to act it, you know, properly? Little things mean a lot. Um, and actually, I was saying here how much easier actually it is in real life because you can move your body you can look out the window you can s clearly see you know the traffic lines and stuff like that so 
but yeah uh, I definitely recommend the A2A's uh, simulation aircraft because they are just an amazing job of what they did and we're gonna do a little parking spot and I, I tell you there's so much work that they put into these planes this is like you have to do everything you have to do in real life so if you you have the checklist you go over the checklist you start the airplane you go through the procedures you check look the aircraft over um, yeah it's uh, f you know if you decide to go for your pilot's license you know you'll be one up on the game because you'll know what to do you know and it'll greatly help you out so I'm a stickler for parking so of course I wanted to see this great parking job that I was doing which I'm like, come on, power, come on, little power, come on, push, push it, push it, real good. Mm, 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 mm. There we go. Nope. And I'm like, screw it. What I do? What I do? Okay. Power, a little bit of break, a little bit of break, a little break, a little break. Er, there we go. Er, I'm like, oh god, that sucks. I did a crappy job parking. But I'm like, a little bit more power, a little bit more power. Come on. There we go. Oh, much better. Look at that. Much better doesn't look as sloppy and now what you can do is what's very cool is um, we'll do the shutdown procedure I pulled out the lean uh, leaned on the fuel which cut my motor avionics off switches off ding 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 switches off main battery power off ignition off and what's really cool with these planes you have the tow bar but you also have the cold and dark so I'll put up shift F3 and then cold and dark pink and what does that do look at that it puts the chalks on it puts your tie downs on it puts your pitted cover on I mean they really thought of everything when they did this aircraft pretty pretty amazing so I definitely hope you'll enjoy this video uh, as I said I've been watching uh, I watch mr. aviation 101 he's a he's a, a young guy I think he's like 2021 20, he's been flying for a while very good pilot I can see and plus he's a certified flight instructor and I've been watching other people's uh, you know landing techniques and all that stuff so I can get better at landing so thank you